good evening to all so today's webinar topic is on the foundation to electric vehicle testing so before we go in depth on what is vehicle testing uh, first i would like to highlight to to all of you that why do we require vehicle testing what is the um, importance of it uh, in, while in the working culture or maybe for any project purpose so first and the most uh, important point is for the pro, uh, prototype evaluation so whenever you have something uh, a product in your mind or a vehicle uh, in your mind or a project in your mind uh, you need to build a prototype to look into how it works actually and every time you build a prototype uh, the expectation of your outcomes at the start of your project uh, won't be matching 100% when you build the first prototype so there will be a lot of evaluations uh, there will be a lot of iterations uh, so to evaluate where does your prototype stands so we do we go for vehicle testing and as i said above to test and analyze all the prototypes or iterations which you have and to optimize the vehicle so the, there is some desired outcomes at the end or at the start to meet at, uh, those points at the desired outcomes at the end you need to keep on optimizing your prototypes until you come up with a final product which will be uh, uh, releasing you know, uh, to the public or to the market i would say then to basically analyze all the real one performance thing is uh, you have simulations nowadays are very well advanced simulations also but what you see on paper what you see on systems it, uh, but what you see in real has a lot of uh, there is a lot of di differences and it makes um, the kind of, the outcomes which you think we which you will be getting in the uh, on paper or maybe on uh, system simulations won't be uh, completely matching to what expectation you would have in real world so whenever you uh, do the performance testing or any analysis in the real world then only the uh, the desired values can be achieved by optimizing it and uh, one uh, another major uh, point i would consider for especially for electric vehicle testing energy consumption because at the end when you talk about electric vehicle the first thing uh, in anyone's mind or in the public minds of uh, indians usually it comes to range what is the range so range is indirectly again connected to energy consumption so when you talk about energy consumption there are uh, many parameters uh, which we'd be seeing further in our uh, webinar we'll look at what all parameters affect the energy consumption so these consumptions you get a specific value when you perform it or when you test it in real world that is when you could get a uh, a real world range from your product uh, from your product or from your vehicle and uh, each uh, components uh, in electric vehicle if you look at as like motor controller motor let it be battery bms they each component has their own efficiency it's not that all the each of the subsystem or uh, sub components uh, doesn't run at 100% efficiency uh, how you you might have taken in uh, simulations or or while your calculations on papers or excel right so they have certain efficiency these efficiencies are uh connected to dynamic approach not a static matter you don't take an efficiency of 85% of motor uh continuously the motor might be performing uh, 85% uh, at 85% efficiency at certain region only at certain rpm it would be performing around 85 at certain other rpm range it would be performing around 95 so to get to know the uh, uh, a complete components uh, efficiency you need to do uh, complete vehicle testing then again as i talked about efficiency if you come across any uh, uh, pros and cons especially it's regarding the cons then you need to work on the optimization of component level so to work on component level you need to go for real world vehicle testing only then only you get get to know uh, how the component uh, is performing after integration uh, they do test before integration each component have their own testing but uh, again uh, the results change when you integrate it uh, and uh, get a final result and yeah as 
uh, another important factor was the real world range because uh, that's the most hot topic or that's the most constrained part uh, where uh, especially from india people are um, uh, stopping themselves from buying electric vehicles is they are not getting the real world uh, i mean the range which are been quoted according to ari uh, which manufactures uh, states so this those are all for a standard um, a testing procedure so here in vehicle testing you get actually the real world uh, whatever you, we, we usually go through from the vehicle in day to day life then comes the validation part so as i again mentioned in the above points that you have some aspects or you have some performance data according to your simulation or according to your calculation anything you need to validate it and uh, uh, make sure that what you had assumed or what we had uh, worked on does it uh, cope up with it okay so uh for the, uh, in in the topic of electric vehicle testing centers in india we have a uh, uh, many number of uh, institutes uh, which are directly connected to uh, indian government some are uh, private but again they do work for the yeah um, i mean uh, for the government uh, uh, all the uh, for uh, for example first one is the main ari uh, which is in uh, in most of the places especially for pune uh, we have nat trip then we have a global automotive research center icat so uh, if you are a manufacturer or you have a, a product from your self electric vehicle and if you get certified from this organization then only uh, they will be allowed legally to enter the market or in, enter the public so what do they do uh, even they have a testing centers uh, uh, you might have seen if any of the vehicles uh, before they pre, uh, pre release to the market uh, in a camouflage uh, you, you might have seen the vehicle getting tested with all the equipments attached to it so that is what each oem does they uh, get a real world test and also they get this uh, authorized uh, uh, testing centers to uh, pay, uh, pass the basic requirement uh, for a particular vehicle so on left hand side you could see uh, there's a dynamometer uh, there is a um, uh, to know what the aerodynamic resistive force there your fan uh, there your continuous monitoring system uh, with uh, this dynamometer uh, have a certain preload conditions where you can increase the load according to your maybe uh, whether it's a gradable ro uh, road or whether it's according to uh, the acceleration all such parameters can be uh, simulated here but uh, as you can see in the picture only it's clearly seen that everything is done in a standardized uh, uh, environmental condition this is nothing uh related to your real world even on the uh, right hand side you can see um, uh, the test tracks where each test are uh, predefined here uh, for example you can see uh, we have slalom test here we have uh, different types of road profile uh, uh, with uh, a certain different types of gradability is also uh, performed here you also can have um, uh, different types of roads like gravel road sand mud all these types of road are predefined uh, so these uh, uh, testing centers provide you standardized data so based on which you get a uh, uh, a star marked range on your brochure of any vehicles that 230 kilometers 120 kilometers with a star so this is different when we uh, refer to real world testing so let us look at how we would do in the real world before go to testing what are the testing equipments majorly required for electric vehicles i want to talk about ic i will most stress on only on uh, electric vehicles so you can see first you require a test vehicle so you which whichever prototype you have whichever final product you have a uh, test vehicle has to be present then with a custom battery pack why with a custom battery pack because uh, you can uh, we can go with a, a certain standard battery packs we need we, all these things are still in optimization process you need to know whether the 4 kilowatt hour is enough or should we go with higher so to decide is there is still a custom battery pack for one point 
another point why do we choose custom battery pack is to um, get configured with uh, configurable smart bms where this smart bms uh, if you uh, if any of uh, would have attended the bms functionality webinar you would get a more clear idea where when this smart bms uh, bms is nothing but a battery management system is attached with your uh, custom battery pack you will get uh, current data of your uh, what is the battery voltage what is the cell voltage whether it's in balanced state uh, you can configure uh, what is the maximum voltage your battery pack can charge what is the maximum minimum voltage your battery pack can up to discharge temperature setting charging uh, setting discharging setting various few other parameters everything can be monitored also it can be configured also and you can log the data why do we need log to data we, i need to know my vehicle how much uh, amount of uh, energy is being consumed or how much amount of uh, uh, current is has been discharged for uh, any road profiles uh, where i am uh, riding my vehicle so that would give me an idea overall on uh, what should be my battery pack and again based on that what will be the real time uh, range i would be getting then uh, uh, it's obvious that when you have a configured uh, smart pms you uh, you'll also require a software interface to control all this then we have uh, configure motor control here you can see uh, for example kelly motor controller there are various other uh, motor controllers uh, where you can change the parameters whether you need a, re a reverse speed if we want a reverse speed what should be the uh, speed limit for reverse and uh, whether you want a region uh, regenerative braking what is should be the uh, percentage of regenerative braking again all these parameters can be uh, uh, what should be the maximum uh, peak current it should allow uh, to withdraw from the battery for how many seconds so uh, all these uh, parameters can be varied from a motor controller uh, then you would uh, require a gps tracker a uh, gps tracker to track your um, uh, all the route where you had been and also for the speed then we have road profile data acquisition system uh, when it comes to uh, electric vehicle each every minute parameter which is affecting on the vehicle will flow will play an indirect or direct role to overall range uh, of your uh, vehicle or your battery pack uh, if you on a uh, switch of a light if you uh, uh, ride your vehicle at a hill let us take with a gradeability of 10 degree 11 degree so more amount of load is uh, uh, drawn from the battery pack uh, from your your motor is demanding more amount of current motor control is demanding more amount of current uh, from a battery pack uh, because maybe you might have going with a pillion so uh, when we talk about road profile uh, there is a force called gradeability where according to your grade uh, the, those each grade will uh, affect certain gradeable force on your overall vehicle due to which again um, you would uh, have uh, it, it will directly affect the range also it will also affect the battery pack uh, sizing based on what is the right amount or peak amount uh, the current can will be drawn from the uh, motor it will be de uh, decided on all these uh, mm, you know, parameters so to collect this where we use inclinometer sensor where uh, when you connect the inclinometer sensor uh, they have a sd card uh, or via a usb cable and you set a reference for example you are at a flat place now we have connected the uh, um, inclinometer you set a reference uh, where uh, from that reference it will be zero anything above the reference will uh, be taken as a positive number uh, what is the degree uh, it is seven degree 10 degree what is the degrees you are going on the road and if you are going downhill uh, it will show in negative uh, numbers then uh, uh, you might require a laptop for data acquisition sometimes a mobile phone sometimes for tabs for your uh, data acquisition for gps uh, all this BMS software uh, data logging also for the implementer. Then a vehicle charger. So why vehicle charger? As I said, it's in EV. Everything matters. So you, you, you will do test on charging also. Uh, you'll do a lot of interactions on charging. Uh, whether um, your charger is able to perform same uh, after uh, hundred fiftieth uh, iterations. Does it take still only uh, four hours or five hours to charge zero to hundred? So all this iteration will be done in vehicle testing. Then uh, the most important safety gears. So this is the data of uh, 
mm, GPS and this for the smart PMS as well. So uh, for vehicle testing uh, and validation, I would say, what is the basic input or the most important input required for this is drive cycle development. What is a drive cycle? Drive cycle is nothing but speed versus time. So at what time interval, at certain time interval, what was your vehicle speed? For example, at 10th uh, minute, 10th uh, minute, 30th second, the vehicle was traveling at 11.7 kilometer per hour. So you'll have a graph, I just, so this will be a graph. This is your time. This is your speed. And how was your speed profile? Whether it went high, whether uh, there was a, uh, this is a acceleration part, this is deceleration part, or whether you are going at a constant speed for a certain time. So all this uh, drive cycle has to be uh, created as a major input uh, uh, for your um, to know how your vehicle uh, to know your uh, how your vehicle performance. You need to feed a data. This is the data which will be uh, presenting. So how do you uh, uh, how do you develop a drive cycle? Uh, that's again as I said, we have all the data acquisition system. We select a route. You select the test cases which you need require. For example, here are the few test cases which we, we have uh, performed at decibels. You can see here some points. So based on your application, whether you are making a performance oriented sports bike, whether you're making a, a commutator uh, uh, electric uh, two wheeler, or whether you're making a car, uh, a passenger EV car. So based on this, you uh, jot on uh, what are all the real time test cases which you require. So uh, there are some standard test cases which ARI performs or which any global uh, organization performs. But these will be the real-time test cases which you would come in day-to-day -day life based on your application, okay? So once you select all the route and once you're ready, your vehicle is ready with all the data acquisition system, uh, as a testing and validation engineer, you go perform the test, come back, and uh, further uh, you sort the data, collect the raw data against sort the data, and uh, you provide it to the powertrain, uh, I mean, the simulation department where they validate it. And they come up with an again, uh, next test, uh, test scenarios. So this goes on loop until you come with a final iteration. So now we'll more stress on uh, what a uh, dry cycle development which you would have. So for something, you, uh, the test cases which we perform here are real time um, urban dry cycle. So where we'll be more stressing on only urban area, for example, this is a city area. Again, in city, uh, you divide it like moderate traffic, low traffic, high traffic. So uh, here you could see this is the uh, speed profile here. Similarly, you will have, uh, uh, for as you see on the uh, Google Maps, uh, if there is a congestion, uh, there's some more congestion means red color, which says there's a high traffic area. So you perform test for all such conditions so that uh, you would get a complete idea on uh, vehicle testing. Uh, I mean, a component sizing at the end of the day for your uh, prototype or uh, for your uh, product at the end. So you have real-time highway drive cycle where uh, you test on a complete highway. Suburban, suburban is something like uh, a, a mix of uh, a bit of rural areas also where there is a, a very low end of tra traffic along with uh, some um, areas of cities where it's not much of concentrated traffic. Then acceleration test. This is uh, very important mm -hmm. for electric vehicles uh, as compared to IC also. Why I said important is you might have observed in uh, IC vehicles, even if you have a uh, mm, uh, 500 ml of petrol left or uh, 10 liters of petrol in your vehicle, it will be able to perform uh, 0 to 40 or 0 to 100 in certain seconds for all the fuels. Maybe the if you just neglect the weight of the fuel. Other than that, it will be able to perform similar. But that doesn't happen uh, usually in electric vehicles because what performance you get at starting SOC, or maybe from 100 up to 75% uh, remaining SOC, same performance you won't be getting uh, 
at fifty uh, percent or uh, at forty percent. Uh, we have conducted the test. I'll be presenting it to you further. Then uh, you have gradeability test, uh, um, where you would be performing for predefined grade some sometimes. Uh, also, it can be of uh, continuous grade. Uh, for example, you're going to hill station where you have uh, attached your incline meter. So for the whole complete hill station, right? What was the grade and uh, how was your uh, battery discharging the current? Uh, what was the mo motor asking for? All the things can be uh, studied. Then you have peak and hold test. For example, this is what like uh, I would uh, again correlate to highway here. Uh, something like uh, you go from zero to your peak and you hold it where it means you can uh, um, correlate to cruising speed. So you, when you go for a highway, you start from zero and you hit around 100 or 120 based on the road limit speed and you cruise at it easily. Uh, then you have range estimation. So range estimation from different SOC. So if the vehicle battery SOC is 100% right now and you uh, go back to uh, until the complete battery has been discharged, what was the range? At different drive cycles, as I mentioned above, maybe for urban what was the range test from uh, as you test on full tank petrol uh, mileage test right? similar uh, with different riders again uh, with pillion without pillion uh, all these different riders uh, will be uh, performing the, the test for the range estimation then as i mentioned even battery charge test is again important for a uh, parameter uh, or a, 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 a test to perform where you will have to do uh, many number of n number of uh, uh, iterations to know how your charging uh, charger uh, plays uh, uh, how does your charger perform and, uh, performs at the end how does your battery is able to uh, or is it is coping up with the charger uh, does it still take a hundred percent it might state hundred percent and you might see after certain usage, uh, suddenly drops to uh, 70 or 80. Uh, so all these test cases will be performed. So from now, we'll be looking on uh, all the above tests or the previous slide where I mentioned all the tests, right? So what was the results? I'll just show you the results. So on the left-hand side, you can consider it here. On the left-hand side, you can see this is for 100% SOC. Uh, this way, a vehicle was here of flash. So from 0 to 40, 0 to 40, uh, see, I have mentioned here 0 to 40 in odometer and uh, 36 kmph at GPS speed. Uh, why is this difference of 4 km per hour? That is because there is a government rule where it is stated that your odo will be showing a difference of plus 4 km per hour uh, as a safety concern. Uh, so 0 to 40, if you consider, it took 14 seconds for this vehicle with a single rider. So same place, same rider, uh, same testing scenario at 50% SOC was conducted for the same vehicle. So it took 20 seconds to reach the 40 km per hour. So there's a six seconds of difference in the performance when you drop from 100 to 50% uh, SOC. So to study this, it's very uh, important so that uh, we go back to uh, um, battery engineering team and ask them to um, uh, come up with a, a solution where a cell would able to uh, discharge more amount of current even the SOC, even if the SOC is uh, lesser. So on the left hand side, uh, we have BMS data. I mean, I said uh, we have a software, a smart BMS where it will be able to uh, log the data of what is the amount of current drawn at each second. So this is the data from the uh, BMS uh, directly and this is the data model data. Model means from your powertrain models, uh, uh, whether it can be from MATLAB or uh, Altair Compose, any other way. Mm, so here you could see the difference, basic difference. When you have performed it on a model simulation, this was the result where you found, right? For the same second, for the same drive second input which I had given. Uh, same speed profile which was fed into the model and this was the result we got. You can see uh, there's a lot of um, variations in this. Uh, it's not able to match it uh, because uh, according to real time when you give a full throttle 
uh, the vehicle start asking for maximum current. So the maximum current which can be drawn, which is limited from the BMS was 30 amps. We can see they directly going from 30, uh, 0 to 30 and uh, trying to maintain it around uh, 28 uh, or something around that. Then only after the load has been decreased on the uh, battery part, the current transfer stop. So, but that you don't observe in model, right? This is the major difference. That's why we give more importance. Um, we also give importance on real-time vehicle test. So now it, that doesn't mean that uh, your model that has been uh, no use of it for this. Now you, you'll be able to study on what all parameters uh, I need to work on the model uh, side to make sure my data are around 90 to 95% uh, similar. So this is for 50% SOC. Uh, this is the test uh, for the gradable test. Uh, so, sorry, this is for the uh, acceleration test for 50% SOC. You can see somewhere it's matching again with the region, but uh, vehicle uh, model data is not able to uh, give you the accurate exact uh, current drop, but it's some, uh, somewhere similar. This part was done after optimizing. Based on this, we optimized the model and then we were able to get this. So this is you know, the second gradeability uh, where you have defined the, what was the average grade. Uh, this is the way. So this is the way can actually zero flash. So you could see we have all the data acquisition system fixed here, here on the vehicle also on the backpack also. Uh, so you can see here on the speed versus time profile. So it took from zero to uh, up to 12 uh, kilometer per hour to climb the distance. Uh, so distance was 18 meter. Again, uh, if you go for ARI standards, um, there are many standards for all the uh, peak performance for gradeability. ARI states that uh, maximum of seven degree has to be passed. Now the seven degree has to be for how long distance? So they state that. wheelbase length plus uh, 15 meter. This is the standard which is stated. Uh, so the wheelbase was around 3 meters. So uh, plus uh, you know, 15 meters, you get around 18 meters. So this was considered from point A to point B, which was a distance of 18, km, 18 meters. Sorry. And uh, the average gauge was 13%. So I was able to achieve a top speed of 11 kilometer at uh, SOC of 55%. So same uh, uh, testing scenario, if I would have start from 100% SOC, the time would have taken uh, less there and the top speed would have been more. So this was the gradable test uh, um, battery current discharge current results, where again you can see, uh, as you could see, there was a, a certain good amount of credit or around 11%. So uh, the motor was asking at the maximum uh, current load around 30 amps, but according to the speed, which was slow, uh, that was fed into the model. So when the speed was low and the grade was not uh, so accurate for as per the real time, you could see the amount of current taken was very less, even up to five seconds, but that didn't happen uh, in the real time. So now we look at city drives. Mm, so basically what would a city drive look like? Uh, as all you have an idea where you have a lot a lot of uh, acceleration deceleration profile you can see a lot of frequency in between uh, there here can is it visible yeah here you can see it's zero and it's zero for some uh, 15 seconds 20 seconds that uh, indicates that uh, there was a traffic or there was a traffic signal so each and every uh, minute details will be collected when we talk about uh, drives uh, city drive cycle and where this will play a vital role whether your battery will be able to do a lot of amount of uh, acceleration and deceleration 
uh, will this diesel engine be able to come up with uh, regenerative uh, uh, percentage of re regenerative which you are expecting from your vehicle so uh, the, we we did we did the test for certainly 15 kilometers with an average speed of 22.66 mph at a starting soc 70% and this was the end soc so now you would know that your vehicle's battery will be uh, be performing in a city in such a way that if you perform in a in such scenario uh, this will be the amount of uh, uh, soc reduction or the remaining soc will be the end. so you could see that uh, bms discharge current is the bms data discharge current uh, the bms is uh, continuously discharging at uh, a lot of frequency you can see there is some match between it uh, if not 100% there is some match so this was able to happen uh, after a lot of optimization of our model so this is how you can uh, optimize your model i mean validate it then again based on this you can size the company so this is for highway drive cycle uh, the speed is less because the vehicle max speed was uh, in 40 km yes because it's a low speed vehicle so here where uh, you would be trying to cruise for example let's take a bike if it will be 100 uh, 80 to 100 so your bike will be almost cruising in the same uh, bit, uh, window or the range right uh, you can see uh, the drop uh, the distance was more here again the speed was more continuously so there was a drastic drop uh, of your soc so this is how you can learn how your vehicle will perform uh, because in ic it differs some vehicles perform uh, i mean give a very good mileage in the highway when you compare it to city but uh, we don't uh, exactly the same things doesn't apply for your electric vehicles uh, it differs so this is the bms data for the this is a model data. So till now we uh, talked about all the test cases and all. Uh, and let us uh, look on the testing analysis, vehicle testing analysis. Um, first thing I would uh, put up a point on the cost. So all these things uh, till now, which I said comes with a cost, right? Uh, in, in to build a prototype, there's a cost. Again, testing equipment, testing labs, lab setups. Uh, and then other uh, uh, uncertainties where you have weather condition, uh, you might have uh, left for the testing and suddenly there's a rain. If there is a rain or if there is a cloud, your GPS won't work. So again, data collection happens where a GPS signal error is there. You won't be able to go. You would have done a testing for 15 kilometer per, uh, of uh, distance and those data won't be able to do, won't, will not be collected due to the um, weather conditions maybe a road condition uh, if you have a bad road conditions um, there is a chance of your uh, connections between the data acquisition system getting broke for example here you can see there is a usb connection usually uh, we have a, a lot of other uh, communication process where like a scan or sd card or via bluetooth or via wi-fi but uh, due to these uh, road conditions, uh, there might be a uh, connection break or the uh, accidents can happen in real vehicle breakdown. Um, uh, when, it when it comes to uh, about data collection, uh, you will see a lot of GPS errors, data files error. You would have been sa saved all the data, raw data which you have, all this drive cycle, um, battery current uh, consumption or discharge current, uh, all these uh, parameters which we collected, they might have uh, some errors and sorting data is again a very big task um uh, whatever data i showed right now was around uh, per second right so this is i have collected for per second so uh, in terms of frequency if i talk it's around one hertz but it doesn't happen uh, when you look at uh, when you're building a performance vehicle especially you would require hundreds of data from zero to hundred so just imagine it hundreds of data from 0 to 100 that's around 100 hertz of frequency even if you take as minimum of 20 hertz which is uh, a decent range it's, uh, to collect the data you'll have 20 data pl plotted or uh, logged for every one second so uh, if you have gone for a city drive for a duration of two hours you will have uh, 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 a lot of thousands of datas i would say Sometimes it goes up uh, uh, lags. Again, uh, there's a very big task again uh, to sort the data, to analyze the data, and again provide it to the uh, powertrain simulation team. 
so that is why we also talk about why do we need model based design or why do we need a simulation uh, it's not only that we uh, directly go for vehicle testing directly uh, or real time testing so one thing again you can say uh, all all the cost uh, when you start from prototype build testing equipment all this uh, cost can be mm, um, saved in the sense until you come up with a model which can be uh, finally which will be the final optimized vehicle model until then you would, you could save uh, right from the start you wouldn't have to in, uh, invest on in all this uh, uh, things right and also to to avoid the uncertainties sitting at uh, sitting with a laptop you if your model is most accurate uh, you would be able to perform all the uh, um, test cases uh, most of the i wouldn't say all most of the test cases can be performed in the simulation that is where uh, mbd plays a very vital role and also to uh, avoid that uh, data collection error or maybe large amount of sorting uh, when you when you talk about um, data sorting in uh, simulation software uh, where we have a lot of i would say a cheat codes or coding where you just uh, feed a line and all the data are sorted or the data will be uh, pre, uh, on the only the data which you want to look will be present in in front of you or for the team then you can optimize the model n number of times there is no limitation uh, you wouldn't have to go through all the uh, all the uh, exercise uh, i would say to optimize one, uh, one iteration uh, you can do n number of iteration for uh, optimizing to before this uh, goes into final product and uh, another thing major uh, play of uh, uh, in model based design is we can do directly the component sizing you should know what should be your motor torque range motor power or uh, battery capacity or your uh, vehicle what range you would get all these things will be known from your uh, mbd directly through which you can go and uh, uh, fetch from the vendors what actual component or at least the range of components we are looking for so when you talk about component sizing in uh, mbd uh, what all you could go is a uh, chassis uh, all the resistive forces uh, rolling resistance gradeability aerodynamic force aggregation force wheel torque wheel speed when you come on transmission you can get to know the motor torque you can play with k ratios to get the final uh, outcome uh, desired values which you are looking for so for now I, for this i would give an example like you have a certain um, x and y z company motor Uh, it's able to perform in uh, all other parameters uh, it has a checklist uh, done it has been checked the thing is only maybe the motor speed and the torque are not coming in certain uh, range so uh, for that purpose what you can do you can come back to the model work with your gear ratios uh, try for other a uh, lot of iterations and you can work it out and that will be helpful for your purchase of the uh, components then you can talk about all the motor parameters here or for you on the battery application so this is how you usually uh, mbd looks for the over it looks like very have a complete uh, subsystem of chassis transmission motor battery and final end cells so this is how you get uh, uh, um, results from the mbd this is for the same vehicle which you saw in the video right so you can see that acceleration force and uh, uh, above and the down is the aerodynamic force for the drive cycles This is for the gradual acceleration deceleration test. Uh, not able to show it here. Yeah, like it. So again, you could see uh, we have a wheel torque on a, a upper side and the bottom there is a motor torque. Uh, right now, you could see the motor torque and wheel torque are same. Why? Because uh, this vehicle has hub motor, so the wheel has been attached to hub. Uh, motor also to the hub. So the whatever performance uh, the wheel torque and motor torque will be similar. so one more part i was uh, talking about regenerative right so anything below 0 so here you can see these all the values you are getting up to minus 5 minus 10 minus 30 are uh, regenerative our negative uh, torque this negative torque will only help you at uh, uh, in the regenerative process where you will be using this uh, part to charge your battery this is saying the motor speed battery uh, power above and motor power uh you can also uh, visualize and uh, look in the model what will be the battery uh, discharge what at what c rate will the battery discharge 
uh, what will be the percentage of SOC drop after your certain uh, test done from 100%? To, you can compare it uh, with this data and the real time. And then uh, energy consumption per kilometer. So how much energy is co consumed by your complete powertrain, EV powertrain uh, per kilometer? So after you run all those results, you come back, you would get all the values about what will be the wheel torque, wheel speed, motor nominal power, peak power, current voltage, cell capacity. Uh, all these parameters will be um, uh, directly uh, deriving from your um, model uh, end results, by which you will have a numbers now. You just go and approach for the component uh, manufacturers or vendors and procure the um, components. So this way it's easy rather than directly procuring a uh, um, component, for example, you, which you don't have a sure idea whether this motor will work for you or not, whether it's suitable or not. You try some iteration. Again, the motor might fail. Uh, there's a cost again at that. You need to procure the next motor. So before going to the final prototype uh, optimization, you can do this uh, sizing, uh, via MBT method. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, if you take from a, a motor manufacturer, you'll uh, be getting um, you know, such kind of data from them, a data sheet, where they'll give you performance mapping, where they'll give you torque versus speed with efficiency plot. So where uh, you will be performing uh, all this data in your um, model, and you'll be coming up with certain uh, motor uh, uh, operating points and uh, those test cases you'll be uh, plotting it on the uh, data sheet which has been presented from the manufacturer then you'll uh, get an idea complete idea whether all my test cases or uh, parameters are falling inside the efficiency range or whether it's going out so this way you can uh, go with the component sizing so yes, I, I said a lot of advantages regarding the MBD, uh, but it has some limitations, true. So example, it, it's difficult, pretty difficult to uh, um, understand or predict the driving behavior. So uh, my driving behavior might be different. Uh, a person of uh, 60 years old uh, driving behavior might be different. Again, it depends. We have a lot of driving behaviors. So to achieve that, it's a bit of difficult in MBD. And uh, we won't be getting components efficiency uh, in a dynamic approach that's absent here, where uh, you just provide a static efficiency value, for example, 60%, uh, uh, that is 0 0.65, um, is the efficiency of motor control. I'm just giving an example. So it's a certain number. So we are providing for the complete drive cycle same uh, efficiency value so that doesn't happen in reality so with your speed with your uh, uh, maybe motor uh, speed, at what speed it's uh, at that moment the efficiency will be different with each of them then you won't be able to uh, i mean uh, it's very difficult to uh, analyze i mean analyze the crosswind forces in mbd and uh, trying to uh, imitate all different road conditions uh, you, uh, when you compare it to real time, then performance of vehicle, uh, as a, as you could see, it drops after battery capacity, right? Certain usage, uh, after certain use, uh, rem uh, SOC drops, the battery performance also drops. And also, we won't be able to completely uh, get another battery life cycle. Uh, whether it will be able to perform up to two thousand life cycles. Life cycle means you are a complete discharge and charge, or uh, so will it be able to? Cope up till then or not? These things are limitations here. Again, uh, as I was saying, a uh, range, uh, the word range or the parameter range, it affects. Uh, and there is a lot of factors affecting it. Uh, if you start from start, uh, vehicle dynamics, all the resistive forces affect the range. A uh, transmission efficiency. If there is a present of any reduction gear. If there's any transmission, a two-speed transmission in the uh, electric vehicle, that affects motor efficiency, inverter, inverter is again nothing but a motor controller efficiency, um, battery efficiency, power electronics, each power electronics, most small components present in an electric vehicle, they have their own efficiency. They Even they produce uh, some amount of heat. Even they need to be cooled. Again, when it comes on cooling, you need to provide some uh, uh, 
uh, for, uh, energy from your battery to cool the pot. HVAC system, your AC, auxiliary devices, HMI, uh, your music system, when you talk about car, charging, whether it's onboard charger or fast charging, slow charging, environmental condition, road type condition, traffic condition, driving behavior, and even the driving conditions. Driving conditions here means uh, we have certain rules in the road, so you need to go at 60 km per hour. Only. So certain, uh, all these conditions, again, uh, matters the overall range. So that's it.